critical area in most graphs are the two axes because they are very important in describing what is happening. So we need to understand what can be done with these axes. Let's first look at the vertical or Y axes. I right click on it and I go to format axes and a whole range of options appears. So let's work through it systematically. The first thing you'll see that Excel does is when it looks at the data it decides what the minimum is going to be, what the maximum is going to be and the gaps in between. But all these options are available to you. So you'll see the access options. At the moment it's set, the minimum is set to auto. So it'll guess what it is. But we can say no, please fix it. And for example, let's say I'm going to take you to please go to minus a thousand. If you watch the graph when I close it, you'll see it forces in that number. Going back here, perhaps the maximum as well. I'm going to make that 3000. And you'll see now your graph is static. It will always, no matter what happens to these numbers, that will be the axes. And that's quite useful, especially if you want to compare graphs side by side and not have the scale changing here continuously. Just right clicking on it again. You'll see we can also play with the major units. Those are these. The grid lines at the moment are split in gaps of 500. Maybe we feel that's too big and we want it to be 250. I'll say close. And you'll see we've just got more items. Right click again, format axes. We have minor units as well. One of the things you can do as well is reverse the order of these numbers. At the moment it's fairly logical starts at the lowest number, goes to the highest number. But perhaps for whatever reason you'd like to have it in reverse order. When I click on it you'll see the order is reversed. Switch it off and back to the normal sort order. Another option here is to use a log scale. Now before we do this because it doesn't handle negative numbers or zero as well I'm just going to change this to a a one. Let's just get back to the axes. Now notice the way this works because we've got a set scale there's quite big movements here. What the log scale allows you to do is to compare things a little bit more closely because the difference in size is actually expressed on the scale. So you'll see that this number here which is 184 compared to this which is 1000 is a lot closer together than without the log scale. And it just allows you to compare like for like and perhaps get a better view especially where you've got very small numbers and very big numbers. Let's just go back quickly to what we originally had. Way back here. Go back to format axes. Another option here is the display units. Excel is displaying the number as it sees it here. But we can say, please can you display the graph with units of hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, etc. So let's try hundreds. When I click, you'll see we've now have got thirty hundred for the three thousand. Perhaps we want to use thousands, and you'll see we've got a little item here which you can customize as well. You'll see it says show display units label on chart. If I switch it off, the thousands disappear. I switch it on, the thousands appear. So you can specify what this is going to be, maybe in millions. Let's go back to none. What you can also control are these little tick marks. Can you see the way the grid line goes and then it goes outside the axis, a little tick mark. We can say these major tick marks, types, appear. Maybe you want none. So when I click, notice that all those tick marks went away. Perhaps if you want them inside. Now this will only appear if you've hidden the grid lines. Outside, we've already seen, and, w and across, which would be outside and inside. So I'm going to go back to just outside. The minor tick marks, if you had minor grid lines, 
you've got the same set of options. What's quite nice as well is the axis label. At the moment this label you can see appears next to the axis. But there are situations, and you'll see them later, where you don't want that, where you want it to be high or low or none. If I say none, fairly obvious, it disappears. If I say high, in this case you'll see it actually moves to the other side. And if I say low, you'll see it comes here. But these particular aspects will become more useful and more apparent later where you see data crossing over where the axis actually has data sort of represented within it. Ooh. The last thing you can do is you can actually affect where the horizontal axis crosses. So where must this line cross the vertical axis? Automatic generally will cross at zero. We can specify it and say the axis value must cross at, at the moment at zero, but let's say it must cross at minus a thousand. When I close, you'll see what happens. So the axis label is moved to the bottom and the cross point happens there. Let's go back here. You can change this to be higher or we can say please cross at the maximum axis value. By default it will generally be zero or something we've customized. If I say maximum, you'll see it now goes to the top. It appears at the top and all the labels appear there. Let's just go back there and just go back to automatic which generally in our opinion is the correct view. So that's the axis options. Let's now look at the number options. The number options controls the formatting of the numbers on these axes. So you'll see this is pretty much the standard formatting options. And you can format them into number format with a number of decimals, currency, accounting, date, time, all these various options. Pretty much standard. What's interesting though is you can see here one of the options here is to say linked to source. At the moment because it's ticked, any formatting that happens here will be pulled through into the graph. If you untick it, what will happen is if you make changes here it won't come into the graph. The graph will maintain the formatting that you've expressed here. So we'll just leave that on. Looking at the other options, the full, same as the other areas, you can de define how you want it to be filled, give it various colors, you can see what happens, have a gradient fill, a picture fill, automatic which is what we prefer. Similar with the line color, all the various options exist. The line style, do you want a dash, how do you handle corners etc. A shadow, same standard features, 3D format if you want to make it look a little bit special. And the last one is alignment where you can specify how it will be aligned. So let's go and let's say Let's play with this, see if there's any impact here. No real impact there because the information is not big enough. But the text direction we can say let's rotate it all 90 degrees for example. And you'll see in this case it's a bit of a mess. I'll go back to horizontal and let's do a custom one. And you'll see I can gently change the shape which may be a little bit easier. Again depending on what is active, these items might now be available to you to resize the shape to fit the text and to play with the internal margins. But that covers the vertical axis. Now you mustn't forget we've looked at the vertical axis. The horizontal axis, as you may expect, would be very similar. So I'm going to just right click and say format axis. But there are some unique items. So these items here, the number, the full, line color, style, etc., alignment, are all the same. But under axes options, you've got a couple of new ones. So you'll see here the first thing says the interval between tick marks. Here are your tick marks. If I change that maybe to 2, what you'll notice is when it's active, 
now the tick mark appears only every second data item interval between labels notice we've got January February March which ties up with that normally if I go to automatic at the moment it's the same I can specify it so let's say please do a similar thing going to levels of two just click here and what you'll see now maybe because of size it only shows you every second label perhaps just to fit it in as much as possible I prefer to have every label shown so you'll see that shows there you'll see you can also do the categories in reverse order so we've got January, February, March etc when I click reverse order you'll see it goes backwards and it moves the axes around so let's switch it off again so if you want to achieve that the label distance from the axes so you'll see this is 100 points from the axes let's go and make it 500 points and all you'll see is it's moved it bit further away. I'm going to put it back. Okay. The axis type, quite important. Excel checks to see what you've given it in data. And you can tell it, look, automatically choose it based on what you see in the data, or you can force it to be a text axis or date axis. And this will give you some capabilities in a later stage. In terms of tick marks, here's the tick marks you'll see they're currently outside. I click and I say go inside, and you'll notice they're now pointing upwards. The minor tick marks, if you had minor tick marks, minor grid lines, these would appear here. You could specify them as well. And here's a useful feature at the moment, your axes labels are next to the axes, which means that April you'll see kind of overlaps the data because it's gone negative. I can click on next to axes and let's put it low. When I put it low what it does is it removes the axes out of the graph so yes it's not as close to the relevant points but at least it now can be seen. Depending on what you want you can also go high which puts it at the top. But We're going to go low. Similarly to horizontal axes, you can decide where the vertical axis is going to cross. Is it automatic, in which case it's on the left hand side, or maybe at a category number. At the moment that's number one, but let's try and get it to about here. So I'm going to say please cross at number three. Just click on one of these. And what you'll see, the axis has now moved and it's crossing over here which may be something you want to perhaps show some data to the left of the axes and to the right of the axes. Or you can set the maximum category in which case the axes is actually sitting on the other side. On that side there. Go back to automatic. You can also decide where must this information appear. Is it between the tick marks? Let's actually just switch our tick marks back so we can see each of them. So here are tick marks and our data appears between them. We can say please put it on the tick mark and you'll see all it does is the points now are on the actual tick marks. So if we go back there. So between these two axes they are highly customizable. 